You're level with Danny Ward, basically. I mean, appearances. <laughs> we've probably had a similar impact on Liverpool as well, to be honest with you. So. You said you don't want to talk about who the next Liverpool manager might be, so who should be the next <laughs> yeah. Liverpool manager? Thierry Henry. Nah. Yeah. I don't care. He's not getting any credit. 100% so. I hate him. Hello guys, welcome back to the Sportsman Untitled. I'm delighted to be joined by two very special guests today. We've got Adam from the Arsenal Therapy Pod. Adam, how are you getting on today? I'm good, thanks for having me. Great to be here. And we've got Steve back for his third appearance from Red Men TV. How are you getting on, Steve? Yeah, it's quite a week, mate. It's not, yeah, much, not, not much to talk about. about. Yeah, we're quite, they're all good, yeah. Given it is your third appearance, I've got a bit of a quiz question to start Ooh. us off with. Okay. So I want to know which of these Liverpool legends made the most appearances for the club? Ooh, okay. Connor Cody... Danny Ward or Stephen Coulker? I would say... In all competitions. Danny Ward. I'm afraid it's Stephen Coulker. Oh, okay. Connor Cody played like one game, I think. He played four times across <laughs> all appearances. Danny Ward three, Connor Cody two. So, uh, I was close. I mean, okay. You're level with Danny Ward, basically. I mean, appearances. Like, <laughs> we've probably had a similar impact on Liverpool as well, to be honest with you. So. <laughs> as you mentioned, a pretty quiet weekend for both clubs. Not, not much to talk about today other than the news that, of course, Jurgen Klopp's going to leave yeah. Liverpool at the end of the season. Uh, Steve, we'll start with you. You've had the weekend to digest this information. Yeah. You saw the reaction at Anfield during that win over Norwich. How are you feeling about it all now? Yeah, I mean, I'm still I'm still a bit shocked. Like, it, it was quite surreal the way it happened. Like, it, there was no inkling of this whatsoever. If anything, the buzz was, we think he's going to sign a new contract. Like, we knew his contract was up in a couple of years. And, and the general buzz was, we think he might go again because he's just built this new team. Why would he want to leave this? Um, so... Yeah, it, it was almost like grief and mourning. It was like someone had died. It was very, it was a very surreal uh, couple of days. Uh, uh, so yeah, I'm not quite over it to be honest with you. It, it's you know people were having chats about who's next, and I just don't, I can't bring myself to have those conversations yet. It, it is, it's, it's a very strange feeling because it, it's it is it's going to be the end of an era, and it's just come so suddenly. It, it wasn't as if like we had any inkling this was coming whatsoever. From an outside point of view, another Premier League fan, what's, what's been your reaction? I mean, I'm relieved because I think Jurgen Klopp's the best pound-for-pound pound manager in the world. I think what Klopp has done at Liverpool, Pep couldn't have done. I also don't know if Arteta could have done that because I think Klopp extracts every bit of value out of every player he works with. And I also don't think there's much more the players can give between now and the end of the season because they run through walls for him. So for me not having to compete with Klopp is obviously something I'm pleased about. But I, I do think for the league as the whole, oh, we want it to be the strongest it can be. Losing someone like Klopp is, it's a loss for the Premier League. And I think he's still like, he, he's right up there at his best now. And you're right, he has just rebuilt this team. The likes of Sabosloy coming in, McAllister, those players. It, it's a big loss and it's, it, it's a real shock for everyone. And you touched on it there, but Ashley was Osti. What does it mean for the Premier League as a whole? Like, it's clearly a big loss. Absolutely. He's the only man, really, who's come close to stopping Manchester City, Pep Guardiola. He's done it once. He, he very nearly did it a couple of other times. Nobody else has really shown anything. Arteta last year, sort of, but by the end, it wasn't as close as perhaps it looked like it was going to be. So, yeah, that, that's the interesting one, is that, you know... Is, are we just heading towards another period of Manchester City dominance? I don't know. Um, if they're even in the league. It, that, yeah, that, that's, a, <laughs> that's what that's, we hope that, for. Yeah, that's, that's the hope. But uh, yeah, it's, it is. It's, you know, I agree. I think he's the best manager in the world. I wouldn't change him f for anybody. And that, that's the problem, really, is that usually when Liverpool lose a manager, it's because they have maybe haven't done well and they're moving on. They, they, they've been, think the results haven't gone their way. So, we're at the best anyway, we can't get any better. The absolute best we can do is stay the same, and even that is looking unlikely. So that that's the issue, is that, you know, we're competing against Manchester City, a juggernaut in every, you know, every facet that they do, and then we're going to be slightly worse off for it. Um, so yeah, I've got looking ahead past the end of this season, it's... It, it's going to be a, it's going to be interesting how, how Liverpool respond and what they do. But for, for the league as a whole, I think it's just got maybe easier for certain teams. But at the top, it might be even less competitive now, and it hasn't been that competitive really. As if you look at the list of who's won it for a while, and you said you don't want to talk about who the next Liverpool manager might be. So. Who should, <laughs> <Yeah. Liverpool? laughs> Who should be the next Liverpool manager? We've got Xabi Alonso, obvious favourite at this moment in time, top Bundesliga with Bayer Leverkusen, Nagelsmann, Ruben Amarin, De Zerbi also in the frame, it seems, at the minute. From your point of view? Yeah, this is this is the tough one, is that when 
when obviously last time uh, Liverpool, Liverpool were looking for a new manager, Jurgen Klopp and Carlo Ancelotti were both available and were both obvious candidates. The track proven track record of winning. Um, uh, so it, it was almost at the time I was like, I take either of them. I'm glad they picked the, the guy they did, although you know Carlos hasn't done bad as he, so he might have been fine this year. It looks a bit more like you're looking for the next project, and there's no one who's really proven themselves because Pep's won all the trophies, and Carlo. There's no one else who's been win- winning consistently across Europe and like in the big leagues. Because um, yeah, like you look into Italy, maybe I, I just don't see it. So then you've got to then go for well, look at the as Abby Alonso thing. He's got a connection to the football club. Obviously, he is doing well. He's, he's clearly shown he can manage. You know, Leverkusen were in the relegation zone when he took over, and now they're top of the Bundesliga. They're, they're doing well in Europe. Got to a European semi final, and they're already in the last sixteen. So it feels like it's probably his job at the moment to, to lose. Like I imagine he, he looks like the one who's going to be offered it. Um, and but I think the Zerbi is definitely a, a strong candidate as well. I think they would be looking at him. I think they'd be looking at Thomas Frank as well. I think I think he'll be on the list. Um, but my guess is if they're, if they're ticking off from one down, I think Zabi's name is probably at the top of it. Um, and yeah, listen, this this ownership have had to hire managers. They got they had Kenny Daglish on a, on a short-term thing at the start, and then they got Jürgen Klopp. Um, so they've got a track record. <laughs> they got the last one right. So I would, I would back them to get it right. But there's no... There's no serial winner, you know what I mean? We're going a bit down the, the Arsenal route of you're going for the guy who you think could be a good manager rather than someone you just know is a good manager. Um, and that's where, like I say, go back to it, it's it's a, it's a step into the unknown after after nine really good years where you didn't even have to con- consider who your manager is. From an Arsenal point of view, you're just hoping they appoint Steven Gerrard. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is that because we, we've obviously had Arsene Wenger leaving after over 20 years in the, the job and the, there's so much goes with that manager and it is, from what I've read, there's a lot of the backroom staff going as well. Oh, and the whole staff. So it's basically, it's kind of gotten the project right now. So it, it is that, is it the right time for someone like Xabi Alonso to come in or, but then at the same time, there's the risk, does he go to Madrid and when you it's ready, he's not available. So, there's a lot to weigh up. Um, or you, you give it to Steven Gerrard and you've got a fall guy for a year, sort everything out behind the scenes and bring someone in. But who knows? Yeah, I, don't, I think the squad's too good for that. Like, yeah. if, if, if this was like when Ferguson left United yeah. and the, the squad needed blowing up and starting again, David Moyes almost took the, took the brunt of that, didn't he? Alex Ferguson had milked a squad full of 30-odd-year-old guys to the last resort. The pool's got a really yeah. young squad. Obviously, there's a couple of older players, Salah... Um, it's in his thirties. Van Dijk's a little bit older as well, but for the most part, Liverpool's team is a young, young team and young squad. So I don't think you can just. You, you, it doesn't have to. The, the team doesn't need rebuild and the squad doesn't. It just needs the right person to guide them and lead yeah. them. The interesting thing is obviously we haven't got a sporting director either. Um, he's leaving at the end of January. He, he's only been temporary. Jörg Schmadke. So it's, are they going to hire that guy first and then let him pick his manager? Are they going to say to Zabi Alonso, who do you want to just sport and director? Do you want to sport and director? Yeah. It's, it'll be, it's going to be interesting because the whole structure, you're right, that everyone's leaving, mm. all the coaching staff, the, the director's gone. The, it is it is all changed. The only thing that's staying here is the group of players and it's an excellent group of players. Um, but, you know, that they, they're going to need the right man and the right guidance. And I do wonder, um, like I say, Zabi, he'll have the respect of them because... He'll, half he them would have watched them they, they'd have grown yeah. up watching Xabi Alonso so he's got that going for him um, but also like I say at least he's shown uh, a track record of, of improving players making players better but yeah it's not like last time when we had two world class managers who, who could just come in and throw medals on the table Xabi might win the, the Bundesliga but he might not um, yeah. and he, I'm guessing if they want that deal done they'll want it done soon because right, other teams are sniffing around him so who knows it, it's it's a it's a real strange time to, to because it's such a big job. It, I mean, it might be it might be one of the best jobs in world football, and yet there's no like I don't know. There's no I mean because Mourinho just isn't going to happen. No, Zidane, they're the only the ones. Really, I just I just don't see Liverpool going down that route. They are going to go down a similar route that Man City, that Arsenal did driver with Mikel Arteta, where you're picking someone out, or, or be as shabby as as had a little bit more managerial experience. Yeah, are we going to get to the point in the Premier League where every single club is managed by a Spanish midfielder? A very good, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A very good, a very good looking <laughs> Spanish midfielder, yeah. deep lying as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh. How would you? Let's move into the world of a bit of fantasy. I, I think. How would you both feel? If Mikel Arteta was the next Liverpool manager this summer, I, I'd be distraught. Would you? Yeah, I, I love Arteta. I think he's exactly what we've needed for a long time. He's just ruthless. 
he, he could be more ruthless with the squad and certain players, but he, he's someone that, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't see it happening in the same way. I, I couldn't see Xabi Alonso going to United, for example. I think Arteta was Arsenal captain. He, he's had this kind of weird connection with the club because he's, he, he's not from the area. He came to it right at the end of his career. But you see the videos at City. We refused to celebrate when City scored against Arsenal despite running down the touchline against other sides. So I, I just couldn't see it happening, but it, I'd be gutted if it did happen. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure his personality suits Liverpool too much. Um, he's, he's clearly shown he's a very good manager. So I don't think personality-wise the fit is, is quite there, if I'm honest. Um, so and yeah, he's Everton. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's got. He's just a bit abrasive, and I know Jurgen can be a little bit of that, but Jurgen, it, it's just slightly different. Um, and, and Liverpool fans don't like him mm-hmm. a, a lot of the time with Arteta as well. And that, that you're on hiding and offering. If the fan base don't like you when you first arrive as a person, never mind a manager, you're, you're half on. That's why Mourinho yeah. would never happen because they just don't like him either. So no, I don't think he would be top of the list. Um, he might not even be a better manager than Xabi Alonso. There's no, there's no real proof yet either way. Arteta's obviously done it a little bit longer. So, no, I mean, yeah, if, if it would be a little bit like getting um getting the wrong one, you know, when your mum buys a slightly similar Christmas present, but you know, he's a really good looking Spanish midfielder, and it's there. Like, but but no, you have probably picked the wrong one off the shelf. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The personality fit is so right. You're you're bang on about that because we had an I Emery. And it just never quite clicked. I really liked Emery, but it was clear from very early on it wasn't the right fit. And he's, he's a great coach. He's doing well at Villa. But I, I do think that with Arteta and the Liverpool crowd especially, you have to warm to them. And that's what you get with Xabi. Th- there was no more perfect fit than Jurgen Klopp. Like Everything about yeah. the big personality. He could carry the weight of the crowd. And he also just kind of immersed himself in the, the traditions of the club. And that worked. And that's what you need again. It's a, it's a much... E- it's a much easier job in a way than what Jürgen had to do because Liverpool were broken. Liverpool, mm. in ev- everything was a shambles really at the football club. The, the squad needed completely revamping. Everything needed sorting out. Jürgen did say, when, when, when he arrived, he did say, I want to leave the place better than I've... And, I, and he's certainly done that. The only issue is you're filling... You're, you're the next man after Jürgen Klopp. That's the only thing that would be going against whoever comes in next because... You, they're going to look at the, the team they walk into and the squad they walk into and there's a new training ground and the stadium re- being rebuilt. Everything is it's perfect. Jürgen has gone through all of that pain to pass it on to the next guy to just go, here you go. If he'd have left in the summer, just just gone, which I think he half hinted to do. That, that was his original plan before he realised how big a job. He didn't want to leave us in that mess. Then it would have been a real big challenge, but he's half done all the work. You know, He's kind of fixed the house up and someone else just has to move in. Um, but, the, but like I say, the, the thing is going to be, can you deal with the pressure of not being Jürgen Klopp? Because he, he, is, he is like adored, he is loved. That's the only thing. Whoever comes next could win all the trophies and he could be fantastic and they'll get the full backing, but they're not going to be Jürgen Klopp. It's always going to be different. Um, and that's that's the only massive thing against... If it, whoever it is comes in, they're going to have to accept that. You know, that they still love, these, these, these guys still love the old guy. And you're going to have to get your ego around that and say, yeah, fair enough, I understand it. We've seen it as well with, with Fergie and Penga, of course, that the next guy in, is it's always quite a difficult The job. difference with those was, like I say, that Wenger yeah, it had yeah, gone... Kane, it, so it, well, and also Wenger, the squad, in, they he kind of left what he left walked mess, into. Right? It was a mess. Ferguson just left an older team. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a very young team, it really is. And it's, that's the difference. It's just like you say, can you deal with the pressure of... Well, Jürgen wouldn't have done that. Or Jürgen's record against Manchester City was excellent. Or Jürgen's record against Everton was Mm. brilliant. It's going to be constantly brought up all the time because the guy walked away at the the top or leaving things so well. It's not like we all love Rafa Benitez, but by the time Rafa left, it felt like it might have been time to go. Things There was a lot of animosity and I think there were a few rumblings in the crowd. There's been no murmurs of Jürgen Klopp going, you know, we were rubbish last season. There was times when we couldn't buy a win. I don't think there was, I mean, idiots on the internet maybe, but like in, in, inside stadiums and tr- true fans, there was not a single word of get rid of Jürgen Klopp. You'd have got rid of all the players before you got rid of, Jürg- of Jürgen yeah. Klopp. I think it was quite nice in a way that with all these leaks of football journalists all over the shop, you know, Fabrizio, in a world where they leak everything, it was obviously awful for you, but it was quite nice to have the news announced by the club, I think. Yeah, well, no, um, no one knew. That's, that's, yeah. He told... Jürgen knew and FSG, the owners, knew in November, and that was it. He, he'd done the video the night before, so there would have been like maybe three or four people in the entire world who didn't know about it. And I think that's why he made the announcements, because 
Liverpool now can begin their search for a new manager because that's when things will leak. Mm. You know, all of a sudden you're on the phone to Xabi Alonso's agent or the Serbi's agent or whoever. Mm. That's that's got you, you've lost control of that story now. It almost feels like you are undermining you. You're looking to replace Jurgen Klopp. He's, he's leaving, or you, they're, they're looking for the next one, which we you know we, we knew for example. You know, you see when you see uh, managers get sacked and then and like I'm looking at Nottingham Forest for example. I mean. Nuno's already in the city before Steve Cooper's been sacked. Like yeah. you don't want that. It's it's a bad look. So I, I agree. The optics around that Liverpool have dealt with the fantastically really all parties involved. From your point of view, Adam, do you think we've talked praised him massively, Jurgen Klopp? But do you think he should have won more at Liverpool? One it, one look, Champions League, one Premier League. I, you know, I was looking at his trophy record last week, and I thought he had won more. But at the same time, I think it is that it's the juggernaut of Man City. And it's this thing Arsenal fans are constantly... Arteta has spent X amount in four years. Arteta has Pep spent more in his first two seasons. I think I looked at Pep's spend in his first two seasons. He spent like €550 million. Euro. He inherited Aguero, David Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, Raheem Sterling and Vincent Company, and an agent Yaya Torre. They had all won titles already at City. Klopp inherited a mess. He had to rebuild it all from the ground up. And then he's competing with a team that are spending that level of money every year and we're already in a good place when Pep arrived. So it's the... Like Liverpool had a season where... Did they sign no one in the summer? And uh, I think it was like the 2019-20 season. And then they brought Thiago in that summer. So it was low spend. And a lot of Liverpool spend has been off sales. So it's really hard to say he should have won more because actually... Pep goes out and picks the exact profile that he wants. He's so specific on what he looks for. Whereas, like, as I said at the start, Jurgen Klopp has to extract every bit of value out of every player he's got. And so, like, right now, the likes of Endo, that was nowhere near the first choice six he would have gone for. Uh, Alexis McAllister playing in that place. Pep has a Rodri. He went out and bought Calvin Phillips for 50 million and just didn't play him. Like, someone like Jurgen Klopp doesn't have that luxury. I think also, I think it's worth mentioning, like, Liverpool hasn't won the league for 30 years. Like, you yeah. know, if, if, when Jürgen arrived in October of 2015, if you just said to me, he's going to leave in nine years having won the Premier League, the Champions League, the FA Cup, the League Cup, the Club World Cup, the Super, like, I had to bit your hand off. So he, he had... He has possibly the Europa League this year as potentially, well. Potentially, and there's more trophies the Premier on... Premier League. Yeah, potentially, there's, trophy, there's trophies up to be to one as well. Um, you've got to always look at things in context, I think, when because, like how bad Liverpool were compared to what... The, the only reason they were competing in the first place was because of him. Mm. Um, you know, they, they came second on 97 points. Like, what can you do? Kind of, You know, what, what, what can you do? They got beat in two Champions League finals by one goal by Real Madrid. You know, it, it's not like Liverpool have flopped and a bit... You know what I mean? Like, they've had some bad seasons. Last season was really poor. You know, the, the year after they won the Premier League title was poor. They, they, they were almost out the running to retain it within... 10, 15 games so it hasn't, always, it hasn't always been sunshine and rainbows um, but he listen if you win a league title you've been a success it's, it's just a, it's as simple as that you always yeah. will be it doesn't matter how it ends or how it goes you, you've, you've had success add on the fact that he's won the European Cup as well um, in an era like you say competing against uh, two massive sides like mm-hmm. again other sides like Madrid and, and City in particular um, I think it's a huge success I, I know you touched upon it before like, but if the City punishment thing does happen we don't know what we'll do, of course, because who knows how these things things pan out. I think he, Klopp will even will then be looked at even more fondly because he beat this team and he pushed them to the edge while they were cheating effectively. And you know, if it weren't for that, maybe he could have had three, four, five Premier League title medals. So I think if that happens, maybe that question from the outside maybe will calm down a little bit. But from Liverpool fans, we I mean, yeah, we're absolutely delighted. And like I say, there's, there's still four more medals and four more trophies to win this season and I wouldn't back against us. I would also say that Klopp is the only reason that the Premier League isn't the Bundesliga because had it not have been for Klopp, City would have run away with the title every year by 20, 30 points because Arsenal were a mess. Man United are still a mess. Chelsea have been up and down and uh, Spurs have had moments in there as well. But if it wasn't for Klopp, City would have just run away with it and that would have also meant that in the times where they've had to get the 9,900 points, 
they would have stopped playing at 84, 85, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't have had the entertainment and you would have a, a scrap for top four. So we would have saw a lot of fairly average sides. And I don't know if the league would have continued to grow the way it was if it wasn't for Jurgen Klopp pushing Pep all the way. It's a really, really good point. We've also got a Premier League meeting between these two sides, Arsenal and Liverpool, on Super Sunday. Massive game for both teams. We've got a star player coming back for Liverpool, it looks like, after Egypt were knocked out of the... AFCON. Maybe. It depends on what Maybe. Yeah. Depends how his injury is, but he's certainly coming back to the City. How have you thought that Liverpool have coped with Salah in his absence? Because from an outside point of view, it's been plain sailing, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, we've, we've, yeah, absolutely. Liverpool have continued to, to win. Um, so, yeah, they've done well. Obviously, the hamstring injury, we'll see how he is with that one. Um, yeah, we've done, we've done well. Um, it, it's been a rotating cast on that right-hand side, you know, it's, it's interesting because usually touch wood Salah's very rarely injured he is now he doesn't really get in he plays so many games if you look at the games he's missed for Liverpool in the Premier League other than AFCON duty I think he's missed like two games it's something absolutely remarkable um, so it's never been a problem we've had to worry about other than every couple of years when the AFCON comes um, so Jota, Diaz, Elliot we've had a few kind of Bradley played there in the in the cup the other day a lot of people have um, have filled in but other people have, have kind of stood up a little bit and, and been counted in this time. You know, Joss has scored goals, Nunez has scored goals, Diaz has scored goals. We score way more goals from midfield than we ever have done for a long time. Which, um, again, credit to Jürgen and the staff for that rebuild. So Liverpool have coped pretty well for the most part without him. Um, we're getting into a, a bit of a tougher period now with the fixtures list is, is, is starting to be, looks slightly tougher. But we go into it with a lot of lads playing well, um, a lot of uh, confidence. We, we were... We were top or around top of the league throughout the winter period, you know, November. And we, I didn't actually think Liverpool were quite in top gear yet. You know, we saw the draw against United, the draw against Arsenal, where they weren't quite at it. I think we've actually turned a corner post-Christmas um, and looked a lot more strong, a lot more confident. Beat Newcastle with ease, went to Bournemouth, who were on good foot and just wiped the floor with them. Beat Burnley quite convincingly. So it feels like we always finish the season strong. Actually, this is where Liverpool usually turn their on a little bit and we're starting to see that now. A lot of players getting back fit as well. We've had a lot of players out injured. The other day in the Cup, uh, Liverpool were able to bring on Robertson, Sabosley and Alexander-Arnold off the bench. They've all been missed. They're three big players mm -hmm. and they've all been injured. So, yeah, everything seems to be moving in the right direction and, and, actually, and then you add Salah back as well at some point. It, 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 feels, like, it feels like we're in a good place. For Arsenal, it's actually been an incredibly quiet month. I was looking at your fixtures from January. I think you've played two games so far. Obviously, three to come with the yeah. game. Do you think that break has kind of helped the squad or has it been more of a hindrance? Obviously, you didn't want to go out yeah, in we, the we, FA Cup. We needed the that winter break. We Warm weather training in Dubai. Right before we went, we obviously got beat by Liverpool that 2-0. Such a frustrating game because we battered Liverpool in the first half, just couldn't score. Then Klopp made a couple of tweaks at half time, moved uh, Nunez onto the left, and it, the game became a lot more open. And then to concede with an own goal, really stupid own goal to concede, and then it, like, still tight until the end. And Luis Diaz put it in the top end with, with ease as well. And uh, so that, that was really frustrating. But we've, we've probably played our best football throughout the end of November and into December, but we just haven't been able to score. So our results have been shocking. We've had more shots, we've created more chances. Our XG has been far higher. All these metrics that, I know not everyone likes the stats behind the game, but if you look at the likes of XG, Jules one possession, the two teams with the highest numbers year after year after year are Liverpool and City. You hit those numbers every game, then the results start to come. So I'm very confident that we're gonna bounce back. But at the same time, it's I think we needed that break. Thomas Party's coming back now. He's been a big miss because um, last year we had a very settled midfield of Party, Shaka, and Odegaard. This year, Rice has played. Odegaard's had some injury problems. Havertz has played there. Vieira's played there. Smith Rowe, Trossard, and um, Jorginho's played alongside him. So he's never really had a settled midfield to play in. So hopefully, with Party back, he just adds verticality to the team. That. Rice is more of that horseshoe player. He's a carrier, a destructor, but Party's got a lot more intricacy about him. But look, ultimately for us, we need to put the ball in the back of the net. And it's one of those, you can, you can do all those things, you can coach everything, but the final third, that final action, that's a player being composed and sticking in the net. And if, if we don't do that, 
we're not going to win the league or we're not even going to be in contention by the end of the season. And this, this game, we're not going to get loads of chances against Liverpool. I don't think Liverpool will get loads of chances against us. It's certainly not going to be a repeat of the FA Cup. So we have to take whatever chances we've got. Just moving on from that point you touched upon, do you think Arsenal are better or worse than they were last season? It, it's really hard to tell because I think overall we're a better team, but we've had a lot more injuries. And what a lot of people don't really look at is things in context, and which is like what you're saying about Klopp and Pep. If you look at it in context, last year we played nearly the same team week after week after week didn't have any injuries, and then the injuries hit right at the end of the season and we fell apart, we completely collapsed. Whereas this year, we've had a lot of injuries to deal with at the start of the season, and we've also introduced new players. We lost Shaka, who's been a mainstay in the team for a long time. And like Jesus has already had three injuries this season, and we've had Saka out, Martinelli's had a couple of injuries, and all those players, we, we haven't had the extensive injury list at once that some clubs have had, like Newcastle, but we we don't have the biggest squad and we have lost some really key players at key times. And I think we've managed to get through that and stay competitive. And that's what I don't think we could have done that last year. If we lost those players, that would have been us done by November. Is there a, given Jacker's move and the way that's panned out for him, is there mm. a slight feeling at Arsenal that maybe he was let go too soon or he could have been useful at least this season I, I don't think the club wanted to let Shaka go okay. I think it was a case of Shaka wanted to move back to Germany with his family and because of kind of his recovery and rebuild at the club after like being booed off the pitch being stripped of the captaincy they felt look you've stayed you've fought you've reinvented yourself you're going out in a high, we'll let you go. And personally, I would rather have kept Shaka than Party in the summer because Thomas Party misses uh, roughly around 10 games a season. This year, a lot more. But even last year, he played 33 games. He might have been on the pitch for 33, but the last 10, he couldn't run. Uh, whereas Granite Shaka, you knew what you were getting every game. And I just felt that that did cost us a bit. So we're starting to get over it now. And Steve, how are you? viewing Arsenal this season in terms of Arteta and what he, he's trying to do? I think, a, I think they're a good team. I don't think they can win the league, if I'm honest. I don't think they're good enough. I don't think they're as good as City and I don't think they're as good as Liverpool. I think they're the third best team, which is credit to them. Like, that's, that's, that's hard. It's a go. And I, I think they've actually got a better chance of, in Europe. Mm. I could see them doing well in Europe. Um, so, isn't it? The Champions League's quite a kind draw on Exactly, paper, yeah. Think. Yep, exactly. And then before you know it, you're into the, into the, the nooks and crannies of it. So... Yeah, I, again, I think they're a good team. The, the, unfortunately, I don't think you can win the league without two key positions. I don't think they've got a striker. I don't think they've got a goalkeeper who's good enough. Um, and that, that cost you. Uh, at some point, it, it will cost. I, I, think, I think it already has. You're right. Those games that Arsenal have failed to win, Liverpool have just about won this season. Or not. Or drew. Like a last-minute equaliser at Luton, for example. Arsenal have had to win a couple of late winners themselves. Uh, of, again, at Luton, funny enough. But... I do think that's probably what's hurting them a little bit. Um, like, I get the Jesus thing. He's been injured, but Jesus is always injured. He's been injured. Yeah. He was injured at City as well. You knew that when you bought him. You kind of half need to ex understand that that might be the case. Yeah. Um, I think it's... What's happened is you've got two young players, fantastic wide players, brilliant, Shaka and Martinelli. Uh, sorry, uh, Saka and Martinelli. But that's like... Behind them, it's like... He obviously plays them a lot, a lot. And then... The young players are inconsistent. You can't, you couldn't have expected Saka just to be as good as he was last season, mm -hmm. and then that that trend just goes continues up. It's just it's impossible to do. So, I kind of agree a little bit. The the squad isn't fantastic. I think Arsenal's eleven can give anyone a game, uh, but even with Arsenal's strongest bench, I look at it and think there's not. It's not brilliant. There aren't too many game changing options off the bench. You know, Inketi is a good player, but no, he's, he, it, he's not good enough. Yeah, that, exactly. That, that's and then, the reality. Yeah, I was just I'm just trying to think through the team. Nelson against same. I, I do look at Trossard maybe as like a good squad player at best, maybe decent enough. But I don't think Arsenal's strength and depth is is good enough at this moment in time. I think the eleven's brilliant. I think the two centre backs are fantastic. I, I think they're unbelievable. Declan Rice, Odegaard, brilliant. They've got a, such a good eleven. But especially when you're competing in Champions League, mm. it's so it's so hard. Look at Newcastle, I found it so difficult. I know Arsenal had the Europa League last year, but you were able to make changes. Ironically, it's helped Liverpool this season being in the Europa yeah. League. There's not nearly as many minutes in the legs of Van Dijk and Salah and Alexander Arnold as there has been. And I think that's what Arsenal are finding this year is that they've got a good manager and they've got a good team. 
but I, I don't think they've got the squad that's been quite ready. So we're going to move on now, guys, to a few big questions which I'd like you to debate, get angry about, fight over the table if you want. Not like the West Brom and Wolves fans we saw at the weekend. Um, so we'll start, because Liverpool are top of the league, I ask you, which Arsenal players would you put forward to get into this Liverpool team? Uh, Saliba. Good, good start. Um, Martinelli, Odegaard, Declan Rice. They're the key ones. I think the reality is Saka's not going to kick Salah out of the team. No one's getting Trent Alexander-Arnold out of any team in the world. Um, I really like Canati, but Saliba and Van Dijk together, that's just exceptional. And um, I, to be honest, I think if you just took Declan Rice alone, put him in that Liverpool team, they would be unbelievable. Like, scary good. So... But yeah, I think Martinelli, I, I don't particularly rate Luis Diaz. I think you had Mane, who was, Mane was top, top tier, one of the best players in the world. And um, I've just never felt Diaz, and I know he's had injuries and he's had bad luck, but I just don't quite know if he's, he's hit it or how good he is. He's a player I can't work out. Some days I watch him and I think, you're scary. You've got real talent. And then other days it's like, I don't know what you're trying to do. That's Martinelli as well. So, <laughs> I think Mart well, Martinelli, sometimes when he gets the head down, he just starts running. And you're like, where are you going, man? Just <laughs> lay it off. And, and like Martinelli's a player you want close to a goal. He is a good finisher. And I'm hoping those goals at the weekend do him good. But but yeah, I, th I think Martinelli's got a much higher ceiling. He, he is also four or five years younger than Diaz. Yep. But And again, with Odegaard, although I, I really, really like Harvey Elliott, and I think he's a player with such a high ceiling and that will do a similar job to Odegaard. So I, I really like the Liverpool team as a whole. Hmm? So you agree with that? Like uh, Rice, definitely. Mm -hmm. Odegaard, probably. Uh, um, although he plays in a very similar position to Sabah's life. Odegaard's been a bit more consistent. Sabah's been brilliant, but it's, it's mm -hmm. a short time. The Saliba Canate one's interesting, actually, it really is. France actually go the other way. Yeah. France go Canate. Um, when Canate's fit and play, and I wouldn't swap him, if I'm honest. And I think Saliba's fantastic. I think Gabriel's is, fantastic I, as well. I, I wouldn't swap yeah. our two for your two, and I don't think it would go the you? other way. But Canate's problem's been the injuries. He, he, he can't play five games on the run. Mm -hmm. You have to dip him in and out the team, and you don't really want to do that with a centre back. So if you if you're building a, a squad for the season, I would go with Saliba. Maybe in a one off game, I, I might go Canate. He's a bit more physical, and I think that suits the way we play because we leave our centre backs on an island. You are exp it, it's like you know Trent. Trent is gone. He's, he is, isn't well, there. Yeah. We, we do the same yeah. with Zinchenko. Gabriel well, we covers that big. That's what I'm saying. Bit of space. If, if you if it was. Saliba doesn't have to do that as much on the right because you're playing with a more conventional mm. right back. We don't have a right back, Trent in the field. So that's what Canate is so good at playing out there. Um, the Martinelli one's interesting because I think I'd still probably go with, I'd actually go Jota over both of them, over Diaz and, and Martin. Jota's sensational. He'd be brilliant for Arsenal. He's a if perfect he was, squad man, Honestly, mate, if he, he's, he, you know, he's, the, he's brilliant. If he was number nine for Arsenal, they would be sensational. He is fantastic. I can't, mm -hmm. honestly, his goal scoring and his finishing. He's, he's another injury-prone player. That's, that's, that's what he's got, again, going against him. And he's, he's back now and he's in the goals. And he's been a reason why Liverpool have dealt quite well without Salah. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd definitely go... Rice is a definite. I think he would play number six for us and he'd play every game. I think the rest you can kind of make arguments. I do like Odegaard. I think he's a really good player, so probably him. Do we think for left back? Oh, you mentioned Zinchenko there. Obviously, Robertson's better than Zinchenko. Robertson's, yeah, better than Zinchenko. Well, Ro Robertson's issues, just been injured this season, yeah. but like Jerry Gomez, <laughs> he's, been, he's, been, he's been unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, I would rather have Zinchenko, but I think we play a different game. Do you? So. In the way, you wouldn't put Zinchenko and Trent in the same team. Uh, Would well, they be there next to each other? <laughs> yeah, it's like, and I, I love Ben White. He's been playing through an injury. You could tell he, he's Ben White's all about agility, um, his ability to spray passes, and he's just and spray, so and spray tans as well. Yeah, oh man, <laughs> I was so glad when he went to Dubai because he didn't have any fake tan on this time. So, but yeah, he. Uh, so I, I, I agree on that point. I think I'd rather have Zinchenko than a Gomez. Uh, Robertson's a better player than both of them and I think Robertson before his injury problems was the best in the world so I think you have probably five genuine world class players and I don't even know if City had that in their team at the time with, with like Alisson, Robertson, Trent, um, Salah and um, Van Dijk so it, there's a lot of positions where I think it, it is splitting hairs there's very very little in it but 
there's players at Liverpool I would like, and I really like Curtis Jones as well. He's a player that's massively kicked on this season, and one that we've been linked to. But I, I just don't see why a, a Liverpool lad that is playing regularly and scoring goals as well would want to leave Liverpool, regardless of managerial changes. I'll ask you this one, but I think it's going to be a very quick answer. Will Arsenal and Liverpool both finish in the top four this season? Absolutely. Yeah. So on that. If you're both in the Champions League, who next lifts the European Cup between Arsenal and Liverpool again? I mean, given that we've manager. never won it. <laughs> this could be the year, though. Maybe It could maybe. be the year. And like, I think we're getting closer to building something. But to be honest, I think any Premier League side, in a given how far the league's pulling apart, should be reaching the, the latter stages of the competition. But I, I think there's something about Liverpool with the Champions League. And Anfield lights up on those nights. I would like to say us. But, I mean, I'm arguing with absolutely no basis <laughs> to that, whereas you've got, what, six, seven? Six, yeah. I so think your argument could be that Arteta's had a few years at the project and he's not leaving, whereas Klopp's had his spell and now they're moving into something new. Yeah. Shabby looks like a good European manager. Yeah. <laughs> he's done, he's done, he's done he, all right, hasn't he? Shabby's won plenty in his <laughs> day as well. Yeah. So, he, again, he's come on with good pedigree. So, look, I, I think Arteta's built a team that's equipped for the Champions League, which, as you said, that we, we could do better in Europe this year. We've... We kind of breezed our way through the group stage. Even Jesus was looking like kind of R9 at that stage, just passing them in with ease. And then he plays in the Premier League and it's open net after open net. He's missing them. So I think we're building a team capable of doing that, a team capable of winning both the Prem and the Champions League. But honestly, I I guess because Arteta's saying, I'll say us, but my gut does say that <laughs> Liverpool will win another Champions League. I think our squad's better, so I'll probably put it for us. And I think our squad's at a point where it's not going to lose too much. I mean, the, the key one, obviously, Mo Salah, see where, where his future lies this summer. Is he going to go to Saudi or whatever? Um, if he does, then they're going to get a lot of money for him, so that can help. But I, I, I go back to it. I think Arsenal's team can be to anyone. I don't think they've got the squad yet, so it'll be interesting to see how you go about Building a squad's really difficult because getting players to be happy sitting on your bench... It's it's really tough, you know. That's why Arsenal like when you sign a Trossard, you're signing squad players. Yeah. Liverpool don't really sign squad players. Liverpool try and knock people down out the team onto the bench and rotate them. It's, it, that's why it's a bit different. So I'd probably at the moment I still think our squad is more equipped to to do well in Europe than Arsenal's. But I think I wouldn't be shocked at some point if Arsenal this season in particular put all their eggs in the Champions League basket at some point. And I think that would be actually quite. I think they could actually go and win it this year. Liverpool showed a couple of years ago that you are right the third and fourth best teams in England might be the third and fourth best teams in Europe as well yeah. such as such as the strength of the Premier League I don't, I, I, without disrespecting some of the biggest clubs on the planet but it does feel like there's a, the English clubs look like really well set to do well in Europe for, for the next few years Would you rather win the Premier League or Champions League this season? I mean I'd take either <laughs> yeah. If you had to pick If I had to pick I First yeah, I think, I think Champions League and then uh, we'll not have to listen to Champions of Europe. You'll never sing that every time we go to Nottingham Forest. So, <laughs> okay. so yeah. Fair enough. Right. Um, if Sir Alex Ferguson and Pep Guardiola are one and two in the Premier League greatest managers list, which I think we can potentially agree on, who's third? Arsene Wenger or Jurgen Klopp? Wow. It's a really tough one. Are we happy with Fergie and as the top two or do you want yeah, I think you have to given them you have yeah, to because, they, because the medal's medal, on the yes. table I mean Mourinho deserves a shout in this by the yeah, way as well yeah. he, he, he deserves a mention but again he, his star shines bright and fast whereas yeah. these Wenger and, Wenger and Klopp had it I, I would have to go you have to say Wenger how many how did he win was it he won three league titles three, so and it, had the invincible season he won seven FA Cups so it, it, it's a really tough one and I was listening to that pod on the way down and they were discussing this so, and it's Arsene Wenger went through such like a variation of years at Arsenal there was when he arrived it was good there was Highbury he built stuff he managed to poach players from France and then he became essentially in full charge of the club but he, he took too much on and he also didn't move with the times but we had austerity at the club we just had no room. We had to sell, maybe sell 20 million of talent to buy 10. And he kept us in the top four right the way through that. Arsenal could be a bottom half team if it wasn't for that 
period. Ultimately, he tainted his legacy by staying those extra few years when we could have got a Jurgen Klopp. Klopp was at the Emirates, he was being wined and dined, and then Wenger signed a new contract. And so it probably for longevity and how much he changed the game, I'm going to go with Arsene Wenger. But I, it, it really is incredibly tough. I'd have to agree, just because the medals thing at some point you would do it, it does count. That, that's, what we're, mm. that's what we're in it for at the end of the day. I, I don't think Wenger quite had an opponent like Manchester City. Yeah. Uh, you know, he did, but then you know, the Arsenal, United, and, and the Chelsea, they, they were good teams. They were still, again, teams that were winning European Cups at the time that he was competing against them. So the, the issue with Wenger is like you've got to split his career into almost like the first half and the second half because the it's second kind of Highbury and then the Emirates. Yeah, like, he, yeah. he put so much of the effort into getting the new stadium. Make yeah. sure you weren't in debt that ultimately it hampered things on the pitch. But uh, yeah. like Wenger and Arsenal are one of the great teams. Uh, they used to batter us like all the time. Like he like, uh, pull our pants down and give us a little tickle on the way out. It was it was it wasn't fun. Um, so yeah, I would pro- I, you've got to say Wenger. Jürgen's won one. He might we might have two, but Wenger will have three. I think if Jürgen wins this year. I think it becomes a, a, an easier, I'm sorry, a much more difficult conversation. Right now, I think it, you'd have to put Wenger mm. in that mix, in that third spot, but I think Klopp could overtake him if he wins the title this year, because I think beating this man, beating the team who've just won the treble, um, and then went out to spend even more money and, uh, and done it again, while you had to rebuild your team uh, effectively with a whole new, you know, whole new midfield, not even, not even just players, like system and, and style. I think that'd be a major, major, major favour in Jürgen's cap, but... I think I'd, I love, I wouldn't swap them, listen, and, and I love Klopp, but, but longevity and, and winning t- three Premier League titles and the Invincible thing probably tips it just towards our something, I think. And if we fast forward 20 years in our imagination, how do we see Mikel Arteta and Jurgen Klopp as managers and who do we reflect on as, as most successful? The easy answer right now would be Klopp, I think. Arteta... Is going somewhere, it feels like. Yeah, Barcelona. Five, six years ago, I would have said, yeah, now, why would you want to go to Barcelona? They've got some good young players coming through. They're financially a mess. A La Liga's, I, that's why they're pushing too much for the Super League. And I, I don't have any fear that Arteta is going to leave and go to Barca. But look, again, you can't say it would be Arteta because he has him, he's won an FA Cup and a couple of community shields, which we decide to trophy one day and not the next day. But <laughs> but yeah, so I'm, I'm going to go with Klopp for now, um, just because until Arteta wins something major, we, we you can't say he's going to outdo a legend of the game. Do you think Klopp ends up maybe managing Germany, maybe yeah. Real Madrid? Is that he, he, said, he said himself the other day, he'll never manage in England as a club, he might manage England, which England could do with. Um, but he's going to have a year off, and then he said, if he come, he, he doesn't know. He says, at, at right now, he thinks he won't, he, if he thinks this is him. But if he does come back, he's, he'll be abroad or, or an international team. At the, the timing of the Germany job doesn't quite fit. If he does want this year out, which he says he does, it doesn't quite fit, because Nagelsmann's there until the Euros. Um, if he does badly, he'll be sacked, and they'll have to find somebody else. Mm-hmm. If he does well... He probably buys him the next World Cup. So maybe Klopp has two years off and then takes over. But he does seem destined to manage Germany, doesn't he? he he's, and he's kind of outspoken about that himself. So that would make sense. Um, in terms of going back into Europe, that's a difficult one. I, he, I don't think he would... He, well, he's, he, can't, he doesn't like Bayern Munich, in, so I don't know if he'd ever go there. Could I see Jürgen Klopp as Real Madrid manager? From a personality standpoint, from him, yeah, I mean, and he's got the status, he's got the the gravitas to, that the Madrid fans would accept him. Mm-hmm. He, he kind of doesn't fit the ethos of that football club. He is a little bit more. He's kind of a bit of a socialist. So, really and also like playing. underdog fighting against the big gun. He, li- he likes that kind of thing, you know. At, mm. at, at Dortmund, he had Bayern, at, at Liverpool, he's had, he's had City now. So I think he kind of feels that one. But I could see him. I could definitely see him come back into management. I know he says he, he thinks he might not. And he looks knackered, like he does, and you can tell. But you can tell when he says, "I it's do all believe." Those celebrations. Him. It's, 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 all, it's, all, it's all those parties after winning stuff, and or he, he said himself, didn't he? You know, he's lost a lot of finals as well. He's had some real gut punches. Um, if you look at the picture of him from 2015 to now, he, he, he has, he's, he looks like he's been put through it a little bit. Bless him. Yeah. Um, I think he'll end up. I think his next job will be the Germany manager in like two years' time. I think Nagelsmann um, maybe gets two years to go to the World Cup, and then probably. Get, get out of there and then probably 
takes over. The only option is, of course, if Nagelsmann takes the Liverpool job, and then they just yeah. and then they just have a little swap. But mm. I, I don't quite see that one happening. But it will be very strange managing against Jurgen Klopp if he does manage in Europe, and, and it will be it will be an elite team who Jurgen goes to, who you're probably facing in the European Cup at some point. That would be very very strange. It would be like Wenger going back to manage against Arsenal, or you know, like that. I don't know Pep. Maybe if you leave City and going back to face them, it, it would be quite it's quite a surreal moment for us. We had a slightly with Benitez, um, and he went and managed Everton. Um, but the difference was he'd kind of left when Liverpool were on a down. Klopp's leaving us like right up here. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. That's going to be a very surreal moment if, if it does happen. Right, the way we're going to finish today's podcast is to do a past and present Premier League era combined 11 between Arsenal and Liverpool and yes. speed things up a bit. I'm going to kick off by allowing you three players each that simply have to be in this team. Three players from Arsenal, oh, three players from Liverpool. We'll work out positions. 4-3-3, three, three, let's say. So, for your point of view, three Arsenal players that there's no argument about have to be in this team. Thierry Henry. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thierry Henry. Oh, I hate to say it, but Ashley Cole. Yeah. And... Patrick Vieira. Okay, I like that. That's, that's easy. Go on. Gerard Van Dijk Salah. I need to write these down while we're doing this. They so have to be in. Van Dijk, uh, Salah, and Gerard, that's good. Yeah, but I think he's going to be in anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can start off with, with goalkeepers. Probably David Seaman. I, I, well, I think Alisson's the best keeper I've ever seen. Yeah. He, he is the only keeper that is able to do everything across the pitch. So that, I mean that's easy then, isn't it? So yeah. Your right back argument is that going to be as straightforward as well? That Trent's the best right back you've seen from. I mean, I mean it depends. Us. Trent couldn't have played fifteen years ago doing what he was doing. So if you look at like Lee Dixon was so consistent, won so many titles. Um, from the late eighties, played he was thirty eight. So I, I think for longevity and success. I'd probably go with Dixon. There's no way I'm. Do, I, I, it's, for me, it's trained by a mile. He's the better footballer. My just, just, just is. So that, that's a contentious see, one. See, see I, I do love a lot of this current <laughs> Liverpool team. So I'm, I'm not. I'm not giving you everyone here. No, no. This, <laughs> this, I mean, yeah, I, I, the, I love Arsenal's Wenger, Wenger's Arsenal. So we'll, I'll be arguing for some of them as well. So we're yeah, on the wrong but, side. But, but yeah, <laughs> I, I, look, I, I think Trent's exceptional. So I love a lot of Arsenal defenders. I'm not. I think we can do better than Lee Dixon in this team, though. And I think Lee Dixon's. A great player. So we'll go Trent at right back. Centre back's interesting, isn't it? So to partner Van Dyke, this is Sol Campbell so, springs to mind. Or me. Tony Adams. I think I, I'm gonna go with Tony Adams. Are there any Liverpool names that even get close to Tony Adams or No, Sol probably I don't I, think yeah, so. I mean the best we had Hippier? Hippier, Carragher, and then more recently, the, like, Matt has been excellent. But, yeah, I think... It, it, it's like our, our eras of success are flipped. Yeah. His years are the modern era. And I, I grew up watching Hippier and players like that, Michael Owen and so on. They were all great players, but they were never... They were never world-class. No, so, I, so, yeah. Whereas I, you look at the current team, and as I said, there, there's at least five world-class I'm players. happy to go... It's an Arsenal it. defender, I think. I think it's got to be I an agree. Arsenal I would have thought Campbell, so. personally. I thought he was brilliant. But if you think Adams and I... I, I, think, Adam, I think Adams was actually better on the ball and actually quite ahead of his time. Adams is in. So our back four is Trent Van Dijk, Tony Adams and Ashley Cole. We've got Vieira and Gerrard in midfield. So we need a third central midfielder. Oh, this is very tough. Yeah. I guess you want... A slightly more attacking one, don't you? More creative. I was going to say because well, I, I would put uh, have Gerard playing the way he did with Torres, like literally oh, a second striker. Um, for, for, if, if, from a Liverpool point of view, it, it, Alonso, Mascherano, and then obviously the recent title winner seat side. I don't think Henderson or Wijnaldum get into this one. Milner, I'm not quite sure. It feels like it's always in in Klopp's era. The midfield three's not got. As much as the yeah, they were much there's never been star they were, power. They, they were just fun, they were there was functionality around. Yeah. Three, wasn't it? So. I um, I think Fabregas is a shout as well. He was Fab brilliant. Fabregas played in a, a really poor Arsenal team. He was and shone every <laughs> year. So, so yeah, I, I could we even go Bergkamp in number ten? Yeah, forty-three-one job. If, if you're playing that and going with Gerrard and Meza Özil. Exceptional player, but he just didn't do it enough. Like on his day, 
he, he could light up stadiums all over Europe, but off it, like he could walk around the pitch and be in a sulk or whatever. So he, he was one of my favourite footballers to watch, but when he was off it, he was just he just didn't do anything. So yeah, Burkamp, he's got the most assists in the club's history, 94 assists, scored over 100 goals as well. So It'd be a shame not to have him in somewhere. So yeah, well, I think <laughs> Burkamp number 10. Right. That works quite nicely then, I think. So he's a striker. Yeah, do we have Salah on the right, right? Salah on the and right, Henry Thierry Henry. What a team this is, by the way. So we just need a number nine. So well, right, I, I would probably have Thierry Henry as a number nine, okay. and then either Perez yes. or Mane. Or you can go, or you've got Suarez. Actually, or Torres. Or, yeah, Suarez. Louis, that, Louis Suarez was exceptional. I, He's one of the best the league's ever seen, but he never gets the credit because he was only there a short period of time. To throw it back a bit further, Ian Wright, Robbie Fowler. Michael Owen. Michael Owen. Yeah, well, fantastic. Oh, there's, there's some great options. Andy Carroll. <laughs> <laughs> Marlon you know, Schumach. For me, I'm, I'm, for in my, I'm thinking it's between Suarez and Mane, and then that just depends where oh, you want to put Thierry Henry. Or there's uh, Van Persie as well, but he's a, a he's, he's not getting to my team. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I, say, I, say, I don't say, care. He's not getting any credit. 100%, so. I hate him. So, um, would, would Henry be better just playing centre forward? Henri's probably the be- uh, centre forward if you had Robert Perez in there. Perez was the first winger that ever put up those numbers year after year. It was always 15, 16 goals and no other winger was hitting them. Even when Robin came to the, the Prem, even though John Terry said him and Duff were scoring 20 goals a season, they were scoring like 8 to 10. So, so it's Suarez, Perez or Mane, right? That's, that's a tough ask. ask. Yeah, aye. And you could play any of, the, you could play any <laughs> of those three on the left. Similarly, you could but Henri, Henri wouldn't have worked as a winger as such. He, he had a free role as a nine, and I think he'll still, in the modern game, he was big and strong and everything. So I think Henri has to go through the middle. So then I would pick Mane of those three. I'd go Perez. You got the, you got the, you got the side to go, side one, you can have it. I'd have Perez, I think. Um, I think you mentioned about the assists and... He was a joke. He was brilliant. He, was brilliant. he loved the game against Liverpool too. He did. So. Sadio loved the game against Arsenal. Oh, for one so. <laughs> Every Liverpool player over the last decade has loved the game against We should have mentioned Bobby <laughs> Firmino, by the way. Bobby, did, oh, yeah. he, as an honourable mention, but Thierry Henry is the best player that the league's ever had. So uh, he was always going to be up front at some point. So. Yeah. So I'll just run through the team we've put together there. We've got Alisson in goal, Trent Van Dijk, Tony Adams, Ashley Cole as a back four. I don't think anyone's scoring past them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vieira and Gerard holding. Bergkamp number 10. Salah on the right, Omri up front, and Perez on the left. That is, uh, how many games would that team lose over five seasons? It's I don't not know. many. Ger- imagine Gerard and Vieira in midfield. Imagine <laughs> how many red cards you get a season. <laughs> and those two were pumped up. And yeah, actually, that might be an issue. We might need so, to calm things down. Um, thank you very much for joining me, both of you. I think it's been a, a great podcast this week, and uh, I wish you the best of luck for your game on Sunday. Could be a crucial one in the title race. That's all from us on the Sportsman Untitled this week, and we'll see you next time.